Okay, here is our nephron, and you probably have been wondering, why did we have to draw the nephron all twiddly wurtzy and backwards? Why did we have to draw the Bowman's capsule leading out and then coming back with the ascending loop of Henle passing right next to Bowman's capsule? And in fact, this time I made sure even to indicate that the ascending loop of Henle actually passes between my afferent arteriole and my efferent arteriole. This allows communication between the circulatory system and the kidney, the filtrate that is being produced. And I'm going to show you, I wanted to show you on our picture so you could have a big view of where this communication takes place. But I also have this picture, which we also have seen before. And in this one, again, you can see that here's my Bowman's capsule, and here's the afferent arteriole coming in. Here's the efferent arteriole leaving. And you can see this specialized actual contact between the ascending loop of Henle and my blood supply. And this location has a special name. Sure, we'll go with that. The whole thing is called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Juxtaglomerular apparatus. Sure. Okay, it's a big pen. The juxtaglomerular apparatus consists of the macula densa cells. Do I need to say that too? The macula densa cells, which are in the ascending loop of Henle. So these guys are the macula densa cells and the juxtaglomerular cells. These guys right here are the juxtaglomerular cells. Juxtaglomerular cells. Cool? Totally cool. A little bit messy, but you get the idea. Guess what happens here? This is really incredible. Basically, the bottom line is that the macula densa cells monitor the concentration or the characteristics of the fluid coming through the ascending loop of Henle, coming through the nephron. And they send a message. In a second, I'll tell you what they're monitoring. But they monitor what the fluid is doing, and then they send the message to the juxtaglomerular cells, which check out where they're located. I mean, they're right on the afferent and efferent arterioles. So can you imagine that by changing the diameter of those vessels, we could actually control the amount of filtrate that's coming into the kidney or the amount of blood that's coming into the kidney to be turned into filtrate during filtration in Bowman's capsule. All right, how does it do this? How does the macula densa like, what is it paying attention to to give it information about, essentially, blood pressure? How, what happens there? Let's write it down. Oh, come on. For realsies, there's got to be a, there's an open spot, but I'm not drawing with that gigantic pen anymore. Here's how it works, you guys. What happens is macula densa cells detect low sodium in the filtrate. And they associate, this is the part that's a little bit of a stretch. They associate low sodium and low blood pressure. Really? Now let me tell you how they do that. Like why? why? Why is it that they think that low sodium is associated with low blood pressure? Are you ready? The idea is that if there is low blood pressure, then 
probably your filtration rate in your glomerulus is going to be lower. Would you agree with that statement? Low blood pressure is going to mean that there's not as much of a push to filter out fluid. If there's less of a push, that means that we actually have a low GFR. That was glomerular filtration rate. So this, the rate at which filtrate is produced is decreased. Can you agree that then we'd have, like, less filtrate in our nephron? And then can you agree that if there's less filtrate in there, it's actually going to move slower through the nephron? That's the idea. If the filtrate moves slower through the nephron, then there is more time for the cells in the various parts of the nephron to pull sodium out and reabsorb it into the blood. The idea being, if there's low sodium, and I'll try to write it down in my little notes here. If there's low sodium, it means that there was more time to remove it from the filtrate, which means there must have been low blood pressure. Do you see that, that jump? That's the hypothesis about why these macula densa cells are able to detect blood pressure by monitoring the filtrate. Now, what do they do? Well, can you imagine how if the message is, okay, low sodium, we must be having a blood pressure problem, low blood pressure, let's increase blood pressure. So the macula densa cells initiate a response to increase blood pressure. How do they do that? Oh, you know we're about to find out.